I want to preface this by saying that I don't begrudge Twitter and I did not word something well and I take full responsibility for what happened. And if Twitter decides not to let me back onto the platform, I understand. And I will move forward without Twitter as part of what I do. Before I get started with this video, I just want to say right now, up front, I'm not asking anybody to flag his account. I'm not asking anybody to do anything to his Twitter, YouTube, or anything account. Just leave him alone. Just absolutely leave him alone. If he wants to flaunt the rules of Twitter, let him flaunt the rules of Twitter. He can deal with the repercussions, but I don't want you to be doing anything because I'm bringing to light that he is flaunting those rules. Thank you. Well, Ethan, that didn't exactly age well for you. And I'm going to let you speak your piece on this through the clips that I play. But I have to question, how can anybody trust you? I want to preface this by saying that I don't begrudge Twitter and I did not word something well and I take full responsibility for what happened. And I am not seeking to excuse anything that I said or how I said it. I'm simply laying out the facts for all of you to make your own determination as to whether or not the suspension was warranted. Now I've added that extra context to that first clip because Ethan has definitely the right to explain what the situation was that got his original Twitter handle or Twitter account taken down. He now goes by at libfan and then calls it pro lib official or progressive of the role official, which is rather ironic because the second clip that I played at the very beginning of this video shows that he shows that he said he would honor Twitter's decision, yet he's not. So again, I ask the question, how can I trust you? George Conway, uh, the husband of Kelly Ann Conway, who works for the president, tweeted about it. And I responded to George's tweet, and I said, quote, Sure, I punched you in the face to de-escalate the situation, but if you retaliate, I will kill your family. Now, for some context with that, he's talking about tweets that President Trump had sent out about Iran retaliating to the strike that we did where we killed one of their senior officials. So, I can understand why he wrote it the way he did. And I will let him explain why he wrote it the way he did. But it doesn't mean that it's excusable. Which is what he appears to be trying to do in this entire video. Even though the previous clip just before this, he said he's not trying to ex make excuses. He's not trying to excuse what he, he did. But that's exactly what he wants you to do. He's seeking the court of public opinions approval for what he said. Now, my attempt there was to sarcastically reword what the president said and was in no way meant to threaten anyone. There was no threat from me to anyone. Uh, there was another tweet that I made that now I don't have access to, of course, because my uh, Twitter account is suspended, where I said basically the same thing, but I put quotes around it. In this, I didn't put quotes around it. I didn't say, hey, it seems to me that what Trump is saying here is my comment. And this is where following your emotions on social media, letting your issues that you have with people become emotional gets you into trouble with social media. You're allowing your hatred for the president to get you to say something on social media that you know is banworthy. Now, you know your intent. You know that you were meaning it sarcastically. Most people might know what you mean, what you meant it to be was sarcastic. But when it comes to various phrases on the internet, 
platforms like Twitter, YouTube, or any other have to take those as credible threats because they don't know what you're capable of. Which is what I should have done. And I didn't do those things. It looks like I am out of the blue threatening to kill someone's family. And that's the problem is it wasn't just somebody's family. It was a high ranking official in the federal government. You may not agree with the administration. You may not agree with who these people are, but they deserve a modicum of respect that people should not cross, which includes threats, whether intentional veiled or sarcastic. You know, I don't agree with everything that Trump has done or said. I don't agree with everything that Obama said or Bush or Clinton. Those are the four, those are the four presidents that I have so far had the the ability to understand what I was hearing from them. I can go back and look at what Reagan and Carter and Ford and so on back through the lines said and did, and I can comprehend those. But I don't know them from firsthand experience. I don't know their judgment or their judgment, their nuances, their speech patterns. I don't understand them in the context of their time because I wasn't alive during the time or I wasn't able to comprehend at the time. So what we see here is that Ethan is willing to allow his emotions to get the better of him, make a comment, and then get upset when Twitter suspends it. Now, again, he's not showing he's upset right now because he's explaining why. And by explaining why, he's hoping to manipulate you into siding with him, that the suspension shouldn't be warranted or at least it shouldn't be too severe. Uh, I'm not, and I apologize for... It coming across that way. Here's the problem, though, Ethan, is your apology, well, however sincere, sincere it may be, in generally to George Conway, your tweets and your posts about Trump doesn't give you that credibility with Twitter, doesn't give you that credibility with the general populace that you really are sincere about a potential threat. You've gone ahead, made your tweet, and you come out and explain it. You apologize for it. Normally, I would commend you for that. But we know what happens. I have appealed, and I am hoping that Twitter will give me a second chance and in the future, I will make sure that my jokes are a lot more structured to say, hey, this is a joke. I am being sarcastic here. Now, I'm glad you appealed. I'm glad that you were able to make your, make your claim to Twitter and be like, hey, this is what it is. But what really happened? What happened to your at pro lib or pro underscore lib or at progressive liberal Twitter account? Well, as I've already said, and we already know, it was terminated. But that is not the part that gets me. And we'll get to that here now. And if Twitter decides not to let me back onto the platform, I understand. And I will move forward without Twitter as part of what I do. So, ProLib, I have to ask, why should I trust you since you won't hold up to your end of the bargain? And what do I mean by that? Well, you see, you started a Twitter handle back in January 2020 called LibFan, which is the one I showed earlier. Here's a tweet saying that you are not ProLib, that you're just a fan in the, the official account. And then over here, I have a tweet early in March showing that you're claiming it's your video. 
me talking about you on my video. So, or stream. So, why should anybody trust you? Why should anybody believe what you have to say or do? If you can't hold to your your own words that you would honor their decision, that you would just leave Twitter behind. Oh, that's right. That Could it be because Twitter is actually basically the equivalent of the public square of the United States and the world? This is where people discuss their ideas and moving on to another platform like Parler or Gab or uh, Minds doesn't drive the same amount to your YouTube channel as does Twitter. That could be it. But, you know, that's really all I have to say on this is, you know, like I said in the disclaimer, like I'm saying now, don't go attacking his account, don't flag his account, don't do anything. Just let it be known that it is out there that he said he was going to do what Twitter said they, they wanted him to do, and he has done the opposite. So... Prolib, I had respect for you, and I should have called you out on this way back when, but I didn't, and that's on me. But seriously, as long as you were content to keeping it as you're a fan of the Prolib show and that you were, you know, doing it that way, I was fine to let you be. I didn't even bother looking up into you hardly at all. But since going through and looking at your Twitter and seeing that you said you weren't the, you were just a fan, you're not pro lib, and now you're talking about my show, basically you're calling it your show, that tells us that you slipped up and that you don't care. So now I'm open to being wrong. There could be a tweet in there that says that you were able to get your account back from Twitter, but I don't think so. So. Because usually once Twitter determines that, you know, it's been terminated, it's terminated. So, but if you have proof, I'm more than willing to entertain it. But until then, just let it be known. You're not a man of your word. Okay, so it's Monday, June 6th. I was actually going to post this video on Sunday. But some information was brought to my attention. Such as this tweet right here. Talking about how Steve lives in, or how Steve lets Prolib live rent-free. Well, I thought I would take a look here at something. So this is Twitter's search of McCray talking about Prolib. Now, this is top. And you know what? I'm going to refresh it, and we'll see where we're at now. Oh. Well. Oh, okay, so it's still four. But, you know, let's talk about LibFan. You know, the at LibFan. And that brings into the... And we'll refresh this one, too, since I was doing this yesterday. These are all comments or threads where Steve has been involved with LibFan, which is ProLib, which isn't exactly a lot. It's mostly when he gets tagged in something like this one. We got tagged together. So, not a whole lot there. But this is from Libfan, is the user. How many times he's used Steve McRae or at Steve McRae? Uh, let's see here. Keep going. Keep going. It looks like it's starting out pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Oh, now we're getting to a different date that doesn't involve it because... Oh, it's something that Steve was tagged into. Oh, Steve McRae's name. Let's see. Yep. Tagging Steve. Agrippa. 
all of these guys. Oh, let's do a whole show about Steve and his blog. GDC. I'm, I'm beginning to think somebody else lives rent-free in your head. Prolib. Because you seem to spend an awful lot of time talking about it. Oh, you took about two weeks here. 12 days, you know, give or take. Week and a half. Oh, you had a month off. Oh, you were tagged in this one. Oh, wait. No, you weren't tagged in this one. You just decided to jump in. And, yep. There's that. So... So, Ethan, why? Why do you think Steve lives rent, or why you live rent-free in Steve's head when it clearly shows that you are living, you're letting him live rent-free in your head? So, I just don't know. Well, I did have one other search to show you. This is all the times that Steve McRae and ProLib come up together. Or Steve McRae's name, actually. And you can see. Here, let's just refresh this search, too. You, you seem to want to spend an awful lot of time talking about Steve. Now, other people talk about him, too. You know, whatever. I'm not counting those as you. But I don't see any videos of Steve McRae's where he talks about you. Maybe he talks about you in uh, in maybe some of the caffeine corners, maybe, so it's not an actual tag thing. That's possible. But from what it looks like here is it's mostly people talking about Steve McRae. So, hmm. I don't know what to tell you there, Ethan. You definitely don't live rent-free in... Steve said, but I sure do seem to think that uh, you let Steve live rent-free in yours. And I stand by what I said at the end of the previous section. You said you were going to honor Twitter's decision, and you haven't. How can anybody trust you when you have no honor? <laughs> 